The purpose of this video is to review and extend the concept of the Bayes theorem we have seen in class. Although best known for the theorem that bears his name, this famous result was only published after Reverend Thomas Bayes' death. During his lifetime, Bayes was the defender of Isaac Newton's calculus and developed several important results of which the Bayes theorem is his most known and arguably most elegant. This theorem and the subsequent development of Bayesian theory are among the most relevant topics in machine learning and pattern recognition and have found applications in almost every corner of the scientific world. Bayes himself did not, however, provide the derivations of the Bayes theorem as it is known to us today. Bayes developed the method for uniform priors. This result was later extended by Laplace and contemporaries. Nonetheless, Bayes is generally acknowledged as the first to have established the mathematical basis for probability inference. Let us start with the forward probability. Now, that means we want to compute the conditional probability p of x given y. And we also need to know the prior probabilities p of x and p of y. Bayes was interested in this problem, in the estimation of the conditional probabilities. But notice that given two random vectors or variables, x and y, one probability is much easier to interpret and thus estimate than the other. In his paper, Bayes considered the probability that the Wheeler ball ends on one end of a pool table, say the left side with, with x, after this ball has been bouncing about the pool table for a while. Assuming the surface of the table is smooth and the length of the table is y, then this probability is x over y. Easy, right? But now consider the computations associated to the inverse problem. x is given, or observed, and we wish to estimate y. That is, what is the probability that y is of a certain hypoth hypothesized length. How can we solve this problem? Base insight was to notice that the joint probability, p of x and y, is equal to either the probability of y given x times the prior probability of x, or the probability of x given y times the probability of y. Let us consider this carefully. Imagine a different problem. We want to know the probability that a patient has cancer. Now, this is a very difficult problem. Imagine that the patient does have cancer. So x is equal to true or x is equal to one. Given that fact, we can easily compute and interpret the forward probability that this patient has a nodule in, in the, say, breast, if it's breast cancer, that is visible in a mammogram. Say, variable y equal to true or 1 as well, to indicate that we have detected the nodule in the breast. Here, the probability of x and y is equal to the probability of y given x times the probability of x. That is, the probability of cancer and detecting a nodule in a mammogram is equal to the probability of detecting the nodule in a mammogram given the knowledge that the patient has cancer times the probability that that patient has cancer. But notice that the probability of x and y can also be written as the probability that the patient has cancer given that there, that there is a the knowledge that there, we have detected the nodule in a mammogram times the probability of detecting the nodule. This was base insight. Using this insight, he could, he could write that the probability of x given y times the probability of y is actually equal to the probability of y given x times the probability of x, yielding the famous equation that we have shown here below. Seemingly, we could have written that the probability of y given x 
is equal to the probability of x given y times the probability of y divided by the probability of x. This is an amazing formula that we will be using throughout the course. Now to further understand this, let's observe or consider the following example in estimation of breast cancer. Con consider this difficult problem. We need to diagnose breast cancer on a 40-year-old female patient. Women of that age have a probability of 0.0014 to develop breast cancer in the following 12 months. This, as we saw in class, is called the prior probability. Therefore, we can write that the probability of x is approximately 0.0014. Now, what is the probability that the mammogram will show the nodule that has developed as a consequence of breast cancer? This is the conditional probability p of y given x. This is called the sensitivity of a test in biomedicine and bioengineering. Let's say that the sensitivity of the mammogram is 73%, i.e. probability of y given x equals 0.73. Now, we wish to compute the probability that our patient has cancer. Recall the original expectation or belief is our prior probability p of x, which is approximately 0.0014. But what happens if the mammogram comes up positive? In that case, we update the probability of this patient having breast cancer with the following equation. The likelihood that the test is positive and given by cancer times the prior probability of x. Now note that the likelihood is given by the probability of y given x over the probability of y. That is, the probability that the mammogram detects a nodule given that the patient has cancer over the probability of detecting that nodule. We already know p of y given x, which is 0.73. But how about p of y? This prior specifies the probability of a test like, say, a mammogram, being positive whether the patient has cancer or not. It includes true and false positives. For a 40-year-old woman, this is approximately 12.1%. Hence, using our equation that we have written here in the slide, we have 0.73 over 0.121, which is approximately 6. Thus, our patient has a probability of 0.0014, which was our prior probability or prior belief that that patient might have cancer, times 6. Now, 0.0014 times 6 is approximately 0.0085. As you can see, this is a really small probability, indeed. This is why mammograms by themselves cannot diagnose breast cancer. By consider a patient with a family history of breast cancer and or with a gene mutation in a gene called BRCA1, which is believed to in increase or be related to the chances of developing breast cancer. If such a patient has a small initial prior of say 0.1 because of that BRCA mutation and or the family history, and we get the positive mammogram, then the new probabilities will be, as shown here in the slide, prior probability of x approximately 0.1, and we get a positive mammogram. Therefore, we now need to multiply this 0.1 by 6, which was what our likelihood was, as we found before, which gives us a probability of approximately 0.6 of this patient having cancer. Now, this would be huge. Thus, mammograms are very useful, but only in combination with other tests and prior knowledge. This is the power of Bayes. We will see much more of this in the lectures to follow.